Good afternoon, class. Today we're going to practice solving percentage problems. Good afternoon, class. Today we're going to practice solving percentage problems. Please remember that the word percent refers to out of 100. The word percent literally meaning per, meaning for, and cent meaning 100. So percent is for every 100. Okay, let's get to practicing. So question one says, a student earned a grade of 86.2% on a chemistry exam. The test had 50 problems. How many did the student answer correctly? So we have two pieces of information here. We have the grade, which was 86.2%, and we have the number of problems, which was 50. So let's write that over here. 86.2% was the grade, and the test had a total of 50 problems. This was our total. We want to know how many problems the student answered correctly. Since the student did not get 100% on the test, we know that our answer should be something less than 50. Okay? So again, percents are out of 100. So let's write our percentage as a fraction out of 100. So we have 86.2 out of 100. Now, we want to know how many problems the student answered correctly. So the way that I normally set these up is to set up on the opposite side of the equal sign a ratio, okay? On the bottom is going to go my total number of problems, so that's 50, okay, because we know the total in this problem. On the top is my x value, which is how many problems the student answered correctly, which we don't know, okay? Again, if you've watched some of my other videos, you know that there are two ways to solve this. The method that I'm going to use is the cross multiplication method where you multiply the numerator and denominators of opposite fractions. So we have 86.2 times 50 equals 100x. And then, of course, to isolate the x, we're going to divide both sides by 100. So we have 86.2 times 50 divided by 100. If we type this into our calculator, 86.2 times 50, and then divide that answer by 100, we discover that x is equal to 43.1. Since we are talking about problems, we will round that to the nearest whole number and say that the student answered 43 problems correctly on the exam. Okay? There is another method that you could use to do this. Again, if you've seen my other videos, you might recognize it. And that would be to take the left-hand side of this equation and divide by 100 to get a decimal point. So 86.2 divided by 100 is going to be 0.862 equals x over 50. Then if we multiply both sides, so 0.862 times 50, Again, we get the same answer, 43.1 equals x. Again, rounding to the nearest whole number, 43 problems. Either method works. Okay, let's try another one. There were 36 students in a class. On Tuesday, 28 were present. What percentage showed up to class? So again, we have two pieces of information. We have the number of students present on the given day and the total number of students in the class. What we don't have is the percentage that we're looking for. So let's write out what we have. We have 28 students okay, out of a total of 36 students. So let's label this bottom number the total. Okay, And the percentage is what we're looking for. So again, we're going to have an equal sign in the middle, and we're going to have two fractions one of which is going to represent our percentage and one of which is going to represent our other information. Okay, our other information, we have 28 students present out of a total of 36. Remember that the total always goes on the bottom. On the other side, we know our percentage is out of 100, but we don't know what the percentage is. So we're going to put a variable in there, in this case, x. Okay, again, there's two methods. You could cross multiply or you could turn one side into a fraction and then multiply the other side by 100. It really doesn't matter which method you use. I'm going to cross multiply. So I have 28 times 100 
equals 36x. And again, to isolate the x, I'm going to divide both sides by 36. So I have 28 times 100, and then divide that answer by 36, and I get that 77 0.77777777 repeating. So let's round that to 77.8% of my students were present. Let's try another. A sample of chlorine weighs 27.4 grams. If 75.8% of the sample is 35 chlorine, how many grams is this? So again, we have a couple pieces of information. We have a number of grams and we have a percentage and we want a different number of grams here. So let's lay out what we have. We have the percentage, which is 75.8%. Now, we have a number of grams, but is that the total number of grams or the smaller, the piece number of grams? So this says a sample of chlorine weighs 27.4 grams. That sounds to me like it's the total the whole of the sample. So that's 27.4 grams of chlorine. This is my total. I want to know 75.8% of this. So what I want is the smaller number, meaning that my answer should come out less than 27.4 grams. So let's set up our equation. We've got our two pieces. On one side, we have our percent, 75.8 out of 100. And the other side, we have the total, which goes on the bottom, and our x up here, which we don't know. So again, cross-multiplying, we have 27.4 grams times 75.8 equals 100 times x. Dividing both sides by 100, we find that x equals 27.4 times 75.8 divided by 100, 20.77 grams. Just as we suspected, this is smaller than the total sample. Okay, let's try one. A student answered 86 problems on a test correctly and received a grade of 98%. How many problems were on the test? So again, we have a percentage and we have a number. So let's write down what we have. We have 98% and we have this number. Is that the total or is that the smaller piece that we're looking for? Well, from reading this question, it says a student answered 86 problems correctly. How many problems were on the test? It looks like from the wording of the question that this is not the total. The total is what we're looking for. So the total number of problems is what we're looking for, and 86 problems is the piece. So if we set up our equation here, we've got 98% out of 100 equals the total number of problems, which we don't know, and the piece, which is 86. So again, if we cross multiply, we get 98x equals 86 times 100. Divide both sides by 98. Now, before I put this in my calculator, do you think that the number should be larger or smaller than our 86? I think that the number should be larger since this is our piece, not our total. 86 times 100 divided by 98 gives me a total of 87.75. Now, since we are unlikely to have three quarters of a problem on a test, let's round that up to the nearest whole number and say that there were 88 problems. 88 is larger than 86, thus my prediction was correct. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope to see you again soon.